All right, as the as the title of this unit says, you know, transformations of trig functions. In the unit that we just finished or are working on, you you've looked at the basic graphs of sine and cosine and tangent and the reciprocal functions, but we haven't done any transformations of them. Essentially, this unit, a lot of it, you already know all the skills that you need. You know how to do transformations of functions in general. And you know, hopefully, you're getting to know what the basic graphs of sine and cosine and tangent look like. So then this unit is all about the first two tutorials, certainly, are about um, transformations of trig functions. And then, well, it's broken into two parts because changing the period is a little bit more difficult. The other, um, the other part, applying trig functions, we'll, we'll look at some real situations and, and apply sine and cosine functions to that. And then we'll look at doing some transformations on the other kinds of functions, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent. I just want to show you uh, something on the website here. Oops. That. Um, this is another applet here for you that hopefully gives you some kind of visual sense of what we're going to do here. So transformations of trig functions down here if you want to play around with it yourself sometime. Um, we're going to look at uh, sine first because it's probably the one you're most familiar with here. But you know the basic sine graph or sine curve starts, you know, it, it's, its y-intercept is 0, starts at 0. We looked at, you know, the, the de circular definition goes up to 1, down to 0, down to negative 1, up to 0. And then that cycle keeps repeating as you rotate around the unit circle. If you take that as the basic graph now and start changing things, so looking up here, um, just like before, uh, you can put a number in front of the function, you know, multiply it by the by a value. You can multiply inside. Now I don't have a set of brackets here, but this b is um, inside a set of brackets here. So if we just go back to this for a second, um, we're thinking about. We're thinking about functions that, you know, you, you spent the whole first unit looking at this, y equals f of x, and making all the changes, putting a number multiplied in there, putting a number multiplied in there, adding a number inside there, adding a number outside there. Those are the four changes we're going to make here, except that it's not going to be a function in general. It's going to be a specific function, sine of x or cosine of x or something like that. And we're going to look at what happens if you put a number in front. So what happens if you take sine x and make it 2 sine x, or 5 sine x, or negative 6 sine x? Or what happens if you take sine x and make it um, y equals sine of 3x? So you multiply inside, or divide by something inside, or add a number inside. So all those skills you, you have from transformations, you're going to put them into practice here. Just to give you a sense, do you sort of remember what each of these values does? If you multiply in front of a function, what does that change about the function? What does it do to the function? Yeah, it's going to vertically compress or expand. Now, when you're looking at something like this that's kind of equally above and below the axis, it's, it's, it, uh, it just makes it taller or shorter, right? Now, when you have periodic functions like this, this waveform, you talk about, um, we're going to talk about this as, and you may have heard the word amplitude before for, uh, for that kind of a sinusoidal shape. The amplitude of something is the distance from the center line here to the, one of the maximums or the center line to one of the minimums. So we're going we're gonna to think of this as, and you're probably going to describe it as, the value in front vertically expands it or compresses it, but it changes the amplitude. Okay, the amplitude of that thing, let's put it back to a 1 there. What does the value multiplied inside do, this B value here? Yeah, this is going to horizontally compress or expand. Now, the hard thing for this is when you, had, when you did transformations before and you had a function that kind of had some end points, it was easy to compress or expand. Here, there's no real end points. So if I compress this thing, what do I have to do with B? Make it bigger or smaller? Do you remember how this works here? If I make the value inside of the brackets, even though there's no brackets here, if I change this B value to something bigger than 1, what's it going to do? 
it's going to compress it, right? So if I drag it to the right here and make this bigger than one, it compresses it. Now, since the thing goes infinitely to the right and left to begin with, it still goes infinitely to the right and left, but what has changed about it? What's changed about this? What what do you talk, what do you say like the thing is still covers all real numbers but the distance for one cycle the way you're going to look at these is look at one complete cycle here normally when you have it on normally without any number there with this as a being a one what's the period of this thing of this sine curve the period is normally for a sine curve two pi right period of this is two pi so it goes from zero to two pi and then it starts repeating so you have to see this as pieces of this pattern here from there to there and there to there that's one complete cycle of the of the pattern if you increase this now and maybe we can make it a nice number here if normally the period is 2 pi if i put a 2 if i make that value a 2 the b value a 2 what's the period now one complete piece of the pattern takes pi half as much right i've compressed it by a factor of a half, the one cycle takes half as much. Or another way to look at it is the B value you can think of as how many cycles are in 2 pi, right? When, the, when this is a 1, there's one cycle in 2 pi. When this is a 2, there's two cycles in 2 pi because each one's half as wide. If I, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're intelligent enough to... Uh, predict the rest of the pattern here. If I make it a 3, well, there's 1, 2, 3 cycles in 2 pi, or each one is 2 pi divided by 3, right? There's three pieces here, so each one's 2 pi divided by 3. The, the B value is related to the period there. The other two, I think, are, are easier for you to see. If I, if I add a number in here on x, or if I, in other words, if I replace x with x plus a value here, how does that change it? If I am, if I drag this to the right, what's going to happen with this uh, with this curve? If I drag the c value, make it bigger. If I make it a positive number. If I put x plus a value here, plus a positive value, it's going to go it's going to go to the left, right? So you can kind of see that it, it's moving to the left. Now the, the the problem with this is if I don't show you what value I've given it here. Since it's repetitive, it's it's hard to know which way I've shifted it, right? If you just look at that picture and say, and say which way have I shifted it, I don't know which way you've shifted it. I if you don't see that what this value is here, you could have shifted it to the right or left, and it looks the same. This thing this thing matches up with itself every so often, right? What do I have to drag this to here to make it match up with itself? It's starting at zero now. How much do I have to drag it to the right here to make it match up with itself again? Yeah, 2 pi. Now, I can't, the closest I can do is about that, 6.2 or 6.4, the way this is set up. Oops. Um, to make it match up with itself. That's pretty close there. It matches up with itself every 2 pi. So, to look at where it, to look at what uh, what's changed here, you talk about this being, the, you talk about this being the um, phase shift. The phase of this thing is whether it's up or down. Since it repetitively is up or down here, um, you talk about it being uh, a certain phase of the cycle. The sine curve starts at a at a middle point on the way up. So this is this has been shifted four to the right, so about there, right? That's where it's on the in the middle on the way up. Then the the last thing here, and, and of course you're going to go through and investigate all this. I'm not expecting you to learn it all right now. This is just kind of an introduction to overwhelm you with all these ideas. And then you'll go sort it out. This one's going to go, this is going to make it go up and down. Right? Which you know about there. Now, if you combine these things, really, if you uh, if you combine these things, if I can start, stop it, I don't know why I'm having so much difficulty stopping on zero there. If you expand it and then shift it here, okay, you, you just have to imagine that there's a line down the middle here and kind of use that as a reference point for graphing. Some of the other ones, uh, if we change this now to not to a cosine, it looks a little bit different. But a lot of it's the same. The height and all that stuff's the same. The ones that do look different are these tangent graphs. Changing the 
changing the amplitude is kind of a, we don't often do that because it reaches up to infinity and negative infinity. The one you do change is the, the horizontal aspect of this here, changing where the asymptotes are, but we're going to get into all of that later on, all right? So as you work through that, keep in mind what you're doing. You're looking at changing the, um, transforming the basic functions. So from this previous unit, if you know the basic functions, that's, that 